what is the secret to photorealism in CG? Or at least the secret to images people won't immediately recognize as fake. Nowadays, it's so easy to set up PBR materials with micro displacement, downloading super high poly photo scan elements for your scenes, using 16K HDRI 32 bit EXR environment maps with accurate and realistic lighting, having access to path tracing render engines, and extremely fast modern GPUs with enough VRAM to make 2004 me cry while holding my ATI Radeon X700. As awesome as modern GPUs are, by the way, they will never be as cool as the art that was on old GPUs. NVIDIA, bring that back. The people, or at least this people, demands it. With all that being said, and all the amazing advancements that we all take for granted, the number one reason that any animation or scene might look fake is because there is a lack of mistakes. Inaccuracies, sloppiness, shortcuts, or just good old fashioned mistakes are something that computers honestly don't do well. Want to animate a camera? Easy. Set two keyframes and watch it go. But what does it look like? It looks like an uninspired robot got a hold of your dad's Sony Handycam. This does not look real. The subtle reframing, the steps we could feel in handheld footage, the fact the camera operator will always be slightly behind the action. These are, in essence, mistakes, at least from a computer's point of view. Keeping in mind how someone might actually shoot something or build something or play something is the secret to realism. If you're anything like me, you might need to peel yourself out of your gross computer chair and take a walk. Look down at the sidewalk and notice how none of the slabs quite line up perfectly. But if most of us were to make this in Blender, we'd probably do this. But what if we selected all those instances and went up to the object menu, selected transform and then random transform, and now we can put in a value on the Z axis for how much we want to randomize that rotation and voila. Is it an extra step? Yes. Is it better? Also, yes. But what about the camera? Not every camera needs Ian Huber Shakeify add-on, but that won't stop me personally from using it on 99% of my cameras in 99% of my scenes. Just make sure to offset the frames and play with the influence to find something you like, or stack multiple animations on top of each other. That's always a good option. Link below for this free add-on, by the way. It's so easy to make patterns in 3D. The tools make it easy. So you have to keep in mind that randomness is the difference between a computer making decisions and a human making decisions. That's why imperfection maps are so popular and useful. That's why there's a whole category of add-ons designed to help you make things look more natural, which is to say, more random. So go out there and introduce a little chaos into your world. Within reason, of course. This is a balancing act, after all. Who's to say that repeating patterns aren't what you're looking for? Maybe it can help you achieve a sense of uncanniness or otherworldliness, maybe. But if you're after real, or at least more real, then embrace the jank. People are bad at a lot of things, and even people who are good at things are worse at them than robots. So if there's anything I want you to remember from this video, is that robots can't capture the essence of human randomness, mistakes and random are the consequence of nature on the world, and because of that, AI art isn't, and while we may lose the war against the robots in the future, at least we'll have lots of pretty pictures to look at. See you next time.